This is Pat Salber with the Dr. Ways In, and it's uh, day three of the M Health Summit in Washington, D.C. And I have with me a, a guest who just did a fabulous presentation that was so jam packed with innovation that I had a hard time keeping up. So I'm really glad that I'm able to talk to you again. This is John Brownstein, who's an associate professor with Boston Children's, did I get it right? At, affiliated with Harvard. And he's the co-founder of a really interesting project. I asked him if it was a company, he said it's just a project, but wait till you hear about this project, it's just amazing. So John, uh, welcome. And um, can you tell us a little bit about Health Map, how you came to found it, and what the purpose is, really. So the idea behind Health Map was pretty simple. Um, there's all this data on the web, all this information about emerging disease, but really it's, it's sort of scattered across all different parts. And so the idea really was how do you bring together all this different information streams on social media, on blogs, and chat rooms, and news, and organize it to make one repository for infectious disease so that public health officials can actually understand what's happening, but then also uh, consumers. So for instance, consumers care about the weather, well they should care about what diseases are spreading around them. So we made one unified site that has all disease outbreaks happening around the world in one spot. And so technically that seems like a, a huge um, uh, undertaking, I mean how do you gather stuff from blogs and Twitter and, uh, you know, all these different sites and turn it into something that's meaningful. Right. So the idea is that it's all about building a taxonomy that allows us to take text, what people write online, and organize it. So we have a, a dictionary of diseases and locations, and basically our, our mining algorithms look for those locations and diseases and then categorize them. And so we can take huge amounts of data, organize it, and once it's sort of classified, it doesn't become so overwhelming. You can filter it, you can utilize it in analysis. So um, the idea is how do you take and integrate that data and then begin to organize it and that way it becomes something that's useful. So um, so initially you were taking data that was already out there, the stuff that we were, well, I'm a big social media person, so the stuff that I might be saying in my, writing about in my blog or saying in, in, in Twitter, but you've also um, been proactive about crowdsourcing it. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So the idea really is, that of course, a lot. Of, there's a lot of digital data out there of people describing health outcomes. But ultimately, if you can get people reporting directly about health outcomes, you don't have to do the same job of trying to interpret what the meaning was. Oh, I'll just come over and give you the yeah, data. Just give us the data. Tell us how you're feeling. So we've been developing crowdsourcing tools, what we say putting the public back in public health. So can we engage people to say, listen, you can provide data that will actually impact our understanding of, say, flu in the population and give us early insight that we can actually intervene faster. So we have a site called Flu Near You as an example, where people tell us how they're feeling on a weekly basis. We can then take that data and see where there's flu in the community. That can be really helpful data because it's it's highly geographically resolved, it's demographic data, it's vaccination data. So it's very exciting to be able to take that information and, and actually build a public health surveillance system from the people. So um, you showed us something today that I thought was really interesting. And um, of course, who doesn't go to Yelp, right? I mean, we all go to Yelp for I I anytime we want to use a new service. Um, but you showed us a Yelp review where somebody basically was reporting that he'd gotten a foodborne yeah. illness. Uh, tell yeah. us what you learned from what's going on on Yelp. Yeah, so amazingly, Yelp is this incredible source of foodborne illness data. 10% um, of all Yelp reviews are actually reporting a poisoning of some sort. <laughs> and so we can take that data and begin to organize it. And all of a sudden now we have a great view on what's happening across the country that we can then feed back to public health agencies. Well, our time together has really gone by fast, but I wanted to close with something that was a little bit different, not just data collection, yeah. but, a, but a proactive, <laughs> unusual yeah. intervention for the yeah. flu in partnership with a company that's been in the news yeah, a lot lately, that's, that's Uber. Yeah, so we've definitely had this idea that um, convenience plays a big role in why people get the flu shot. And so the idea was, well, it takes a lot of inertia for someone to go somewhere to get a flu shot, but why not bring the flu shot to them? So we uh, spoke to Uber, and the idea was, well, can we create a concept called Uber Health where we put nurses in Uber vehicles and actually disseminate uh, vaccination through that mechanism? And it was incredibly popular. Uh, it was, we used up all the vaccine that we had um, in New York, Boston, DC, and Chicago, and it was really an incredible experience. People really took to this concept. 
Well, well, that's amazing. And I think you said something like this, this could actually make getting your flu shot cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much. This was uh, really an interesting conversation. Yeah. I loved your talk. I love the work you're doing. And uh, I wish you good luck. Thank, thank you. Thank you so you. much. Appreciate it.